Welcome back to Three Inquisitive Kids. In the previous five videos, we were covering permutations, which is a very important part in solving AMC 8 in math count, which is two major math com competitive math competitions for middle schoolers. Now, continuing this video, we will be moving on to another topic, combinations. Let's first discuss what combinations are and what are some problems that might use combinations. Most importantly, we need to talk about the difference between permutations and combinations, as a lot of the times, new students to permutations and combinations will get them confused with each other. So combinations are written in the form of C and R, similar to how we write permutations as, as P and R, except that the big letter in the middle is swapped into a C for combinations. But what is exactly an example of a problem that would use combinations? Well, say we have a jar, and in the jar we have different colored gumballs. Two green ones, three red ones, and then two more blue ones. Now the problem is asking you in how many different ways can you select two gumballs from this jar? And let's say one person did green and red, and another person did red and green. In permutations, the problem might be asking you how many different ways can you order two gumballs from the jar. But in combinations, it's worded differently. It's worded simply just as in how many different ways can you select two gumballs from the jar. So if it was a combinations problem, these two possibilities would be considered the same combination. Because in combinations, the order of how you choose things does not matter. Yet in permutations, the order of things does matter. So let me just note over here, this is very important. In combinations, I'll write a C for combinations, the order does not matter. Order doesn't matter. So whenever you're solving problems, you really have to be careful of how you're identifying this problem. Is it a combinations problem or is it a permutations problem? In permutations, you might have first place, second place, third place, or first, second, third, or after, then, finally. But in combinations, you might just have the word combinations or you might have the word a set or a group, but there's no really, there's no keyword that refer to a specific order. So this is what combinations problems are. Now let's take a look at the combinations formula. Now this formula is very important in solving combinations word problems. So as we're going through four different exercises, I wish that you are also pausing the video and solving it out on your own. This will help you memorize this formula even quicker. So let's first break down this formula. Combinations are written in the form of n and r. So here n is the total number of objects in the set, and r is the number of objects that you're choosing from the set. So going back to our gumballs example from, from earlier, the n in that case would be 9, since there is a total of 9 gumballs in that jar. And since we're taking 2 gumballs from that jar, um, our r would be 2. So that problem would be set up as C, 9, 2. So now let's use this formula and solve some simple combinations exercises. C, 7, 3. Well, the numerator for this combination would be 7 factorial, since in here 7 is the n, and the denominator would be 3 factorial times the difference of 7 and 3 factorial, which is 4 factorial. This gives us 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2, and I'm going to omit the 1. And on the bottom, we have 3 times 2 times 4 times 3 times 2. As you can see, the last three numbers of both the numerator and denominator are the same, which means that that can be canceled out. Now, we can still see that 3 and 2 and 6 can be canceled out, since 3 times 2 is equal to 6, giving us the final answer of 35. So 35 is our answer for the first exercise. Now let's take a look at the next one. This is set up as C, C, 
The numerator is 7 factorial, and on the denominator, we have 4 factorial times the difference of 7 and 4, which is 3 factorial. And now you might say, wait a minute, this is exactly the same problem as the previous one. And you're right, this is this cool thing about combinations. Whenever you see a pair of combinations, for example, one of them is 8, 2, and the other one is 8, 6, you automatically know that they are the same combination and they have the same value. Because whenever you take 2 away from 8 to form that second uh, factor in, on the denominator, or whenever you take 6 away from 8 to, form, to have 2, the denominators are actually the same. So when solving problems like this, especially when you're in the middle of a competition, and you suddenly see the one that you're currently solving and your previous problem actually have the same value, this is when you can actually get faster with going through your competition problems. Um, so this is a cool trick to have when solving combinations. Many times people will pull a trick out on you, and after getting the answer, you'll realize that you really didn't have to go through that entire solution process. All you had to do was copy the previous answer. So this is also equal to 35. Now let's clear our board and take a look at the third and fourth problems. So our next problem is C12-9. Again, all we have to do is use the formula. So our numerator would be 12 factorial and our bottom would be 9 factorial times 3 factorial, 3 being the difference of 12 and 9. I'm not going to expand 12 factorial out because I don't have enough space for that. But you know that 9 factorial is already contained in 12 factorial. So the numerator, after canceling out the 9 factorial, is just 12 times 11 times 10. And on the bottom, we have 3 times 2 times 1. So 12 becomes 2, since on the bottom we have a 6. So our final answer would be 220. And now let's take a look at our final problem. Before I go over the solution, I want you to pause the video and try to work it out on your own. What's your final answer? Well, here is how you should have solved this problem. According to the formula, our numerator would be 10 factorial, and our denominator would be 6 factorial times 4 factorial. After canceling out the 6 factorial with the numerator, on the top we have 10 times 9 times 8 times 7, and on the bottom we have 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. As you can see, the 8 and the 4 and the 2 can cancel out. And we can cancel out the 3, leaving the, the upper 9 as a 3 as well. So this gives us 210. Our final answer would be 210 for our last question. So this is it for our combinations formula video. Now subscribe to Inquisitive Kids to get notified when we upload our next videos, all covering combinations word problems. Thank you so much for watching through Inquisitive Kids, and we'll see you next time.